here with Tiny Alice Listings and today I'm out here at my off-grid property where my dad's tiny house is and we're going to rework his solar system a little bit. Uh, the way it's set up now isn't exactly working plus we have other ideas. We're going to kind of take some pieces of it off and use it somewhere else. So anyways I thought we'd take you guys along and uh, this solar system might be a little bit more in line uh, with what a lot of you guys would do. So anyways we bought quite a bit of gear and we'll take you along and share how we're going to do it. Hard to see in here right now but right now we have uh, 600 watts of solar on the roof which come down and feed this Kodiak by a company called Energy. We'll link to them in the description. Great device. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this and use it for a cabin that is in the back. And that, that'll be the main power supply like for the fridge and a couple other small things. Charge your phone and laptop, things like that. And this right here we have 455 watt hour, I mean amp hour, excuse me, batteries. And um, so what will happen is we're going to just put on this wall right here, we're going to put an inverter and a charge controller. And this, the, uh, my father's tiny house will run off these four batteries. And then if we find out that's not enough, we'll just add a couple more to it. Um, so there's a lot of technical stuff about solar panels that you might not know and solar energy. So we're going to do a new series called Tiny House Tidbits. It's coming up soon. And in each uh, video series, it'll be like one little small piece of information where we explore for several minutes, maybe a four or five minute video. And we talk about um, like one little tiny aspect of uh, tiny house living and solar We'll probably do a multi-part video of that, but the whole idea is to just help you guys along and become more knowledgeable in your tiny house journey. Just put a piece of plywood and some scrap plywood we had left over on the wall, and this is where we'll mount our solar equipment. Got the inverter mounted, and this inverter is a 2,000 watt. It can do 2,000 watt, and then it can do handle surges all the way up to 4,000. It's a pretty big, pretty big system. Should help power the tiny house with no problem. Got the charge controller up. This one handles up to 60 amp and 720 watts of solar power. Um, which should be plenty for what my father's trying to do. There'll be some days when it's sunny and he won't have enough power probably. I mean where it's cloudy, excuse me, for a couple of days and so I have to crank the generator up. Um, but this is, I think this will be pretty good for now. So for those of you who don't know what a charge controller is, it, um, it literally it accepts power from the solar panels and then transfers the power to the batteries. But when it realizes the batteries are fully topped off, it stops charging to make sure they, to prevent them from overcharging. And for the inverter, for those of you who don't know, if you're like total electric newbies or solar newbies, um, what this does is all the batteries, all of the energy in the batteries are DC power. And so what happens is this converts it into AC power, which is what almost all, almost uh, modern electronics are, they use is um, DC power like TVs, washer and dryer, basically anything in your house is AC power. So this converts it from AC to DC and it, it makes the energy usable. This is a very rudimentary, like low budget setup. If you look at a lot of the tiny houses that are for sale on tiny house listings, the setups are way nicer and have even nicer equipment. But the, the thing that remains for the most part the same is that they're all, um, is that they're all the same in terms of like what basic components you need. You can get even more complex with it, with it, uh, with it. But uh, for now we have the solar panels, charge controller, inverter, and the batteries. Those are the four main key, like crucial components for a solar setup. So now we got the batteries and everything. We got a bit of a messy job, but that's okay. Uh, so right now the batteries go to the charge controller. These solar panel wires, it's kind of hard to see. We'll clean it up later, go to the charge controller. And then these two other uh, cables go into the inverter. And here is the 30 amp cable that goes from the tiny house. We had to put an adapter on there, which connects right into here. like that. Everything's 110 so it's not a problem to use that adapter. Now we got the solar panels connected which are charging which is uh, indicated by that blinking. So that should be it. That's everything. Very simple. Got batteries, solar panels above, uh, 2000 watt inverter, and a charge controller. So that's it. That's just a quick tiny house introductory solar project. We took the Kodiak Energy was actually taking care of all of the in inverting and the charge controlling. And we removed that because we need it for a different project. And we also want this, we feel like this system is way more robust because we can tack more things onto it. Um, so for my father's power needs, except for time to time when he cranks the mini split unit up on really hot days, he can, his tiny house is insulated so well that he could turn on his mini split unit, cool the place down in a couple hours in the morning and then a couple hours in the afternoon. And if we add a couple more batteries, he'll be able to easily do that even without the generator. But for now, from time to time, he can do the generator until he expands his solar uh, array and his solar uh, setup a little bit more. But anyways, I just want to share this quick video with you, show you the basics introduction of um, what is needed to run a tiny house off of solar. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks. See ya.